Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our Wednesday evening virtual service here at the North, Holly North Hollywood Church of Religious Science. We're so glad that you've joined us this evening. We will begin with our pre-service meditation. So we're gonna just turn within for the next 10 minutes. And I invite you to close your eyes to take a nice deep breath. And as you release that breath, just release any tension. And with the next breath in and the next breath out, release any thoughts of what has happened up until this moment, or any thoughts about what is yet to be. And let's give ourselves the gift of just coming into the present moment, doing that by focusing on the now moment of each breath. So I invite you to just Focus on your breath. Don't try to control it or change the breathing pattern. Just notice it. And if it helps to keep your mind focused, as you breathe in, you can simply say to yourself silently, I'm breathing in. And as you breathe out, silently say, breathing out. And if the mind wanders, which it has a tendency to do, just notice. Just be aware when you suddenly realize you're not focusing on the breath, where the mind went, what kind of thought pattern it was engaged in. Thinking about the past or the future, noticing a sound, noticing a sensation, whatever. Try not to judge, just be aware, just notice, and then let the thought go. Let it just float away and bring your awareness back to the breath with great compassion, gentleness, loving kindness. Breathing in, breathing out.
And so I invite you to gently bring your awareness back into your body temple, becoming aware of your surroundings. You might want to wiggle your fingers and toes just to anchor yourself back into the body. And as you're ready, open your eyes as we move into our service. So once again, I want to extend a warm welcome to all of you who have joined us, those who've joined since we began the meditation via Facebook Live or Zoom. And uh, we're so delighted you're here with us this evening for our Wednesday evening service. Let's begin with our opening chant led by our wonderful Margaret Owens and Sam Krieger. Let's join together in prayer. As we turn our attention inward, absolutely knowing that God is in this place because God is everywhere present, that God is the one life, the one power, the one presence out of which all creation comes into being and its nature lies at the center of all that is because everything and everyone is created out of its nature, including me, including each and every one of us gathered on this virtual service together. I know that that love and light of God is unfolding throughout our time together, that we feel its vibration as we come together Virtually, as a spiritual community, we feel the vibration of love of those who are of service. I know we absolutely feel the presence of God and are inspired by it through our musician Sam and our soloist Margaret this evening. And I absolutely open myself right here, right now, to being that vessel through which the message that all of us have come to hear, that word that reminds us of our connection with the one so we can experience and express its nature more fully in our lives, that that message comes through. And so I absolutely give thanks right here, right now for the blessings I know that we receive in this time together, knowing it's all coming from the one love, the one life of God. I say, thank you, God, and release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. Together we say, Amen. And so please join me in saying the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. where it's at I am the creator of all that I see that's you that's me the collective we you are perfection a blessing divine we are connected I'm yours and you're mine there is no separation I am God expressing in this fleshy disguise and isn't it odd to think otherwise isn't it odd isn't it odd to think otherwise I am the scent in spring I am the heart of the song that you sing and I'm the warmth from the sun in the sky all this am I I gave you breath but I gave you much more look at this playground we've come to explore there is no separation I am God expressing in this fleshy disguise and isn't it odd to think otherwise if you could see what I see you would not doubt your worth or your beauty be at peace there's no one keeping score no stick we measure by there is nothing that you have to do only what you long to try and you might start enjoying your life for a while following your heart is what makes me smile there is no separation I am God expressing in this fleshy disguise and isn't it odd to think otherwise isn't it odd isn't it odd to think otherwise God expressing in this fleshy disguise and isn't it Thank you, Margaret. I like some of those labels. <laughs> well, good evening again. And speaking of labels, I'm uh, looking at the idea of labels that we might want to unpeel this evening. So what am I talking about? Well, whether or not we realize it, we're constantly assigning labels to ourselves, to others, to what we're witnessing, to the world around us. And you know, from a human perspective, these labels are necessary 
for us to put things in the world into a certain context to understand what they are and how to relate to them. Now, right now, without consciously saying this to myself, I perceive myself to be standing in front of a pulpit, there's a label there, in a sanctuary, another label, you know, in my spiritual community, yet another label, doing a virtual service. All of those words, labels, have a certain context, put things in a certain perspective for me. And, you know, these are human concepts that I've learned as I've moved through life. When I first came into the world, I wouldn't have known how to conceptualize or understand what all of these things were. And they certainly served me in understanding and relating to the world around me. But, you know, in science of mind, what we keep emphasizing over and over again is that at our core, whatever, however we appear in the world, whatever our human uh, physicality, our experiences, our conditions, we are at our core all spiritual beings currently undergoing a human experience. And that that spirit of God, God's nature in us is greater than any of our human experiences or ways that we express it. However, it seeks to experience and express itself in finite ways, and we are one of the finite versions through which it seeks to experience and express its nature. Labels help us to conceptualize the unique ways that this infinite essence of God, this infinite invisible, shows up in the world, how we are uniquely expressing it differently from, well, I would love to have Margaret's voice and talent, but I don't. I don't get to be that version of an expression of God, but you know, I get to express God in a different way. So whatever ways that we perceive ourselves, the fact that I am you know, a 65-year-old male, those are all labels, and each one may have different concepts associated with it, none of which are innately wrong or bad. But where they become problematic, where labels can trip us up, concepts, the perceptions that we ascribe to ourselves and others in situations is when they deny or limit our experience and expression of that underlying spirit, that infinite invisible in us that's always seeking to come forth in new ways. So, you know, just a simple example is right now, I see that there are two chairs, there's a label, behind me. And I think we all have an association with when we see something that we label a chair. We know it's something that we sit in, that it's a piece of furniture, and that's its purpose. However, I bet at some point, every one of us, if we didn't happen to have a step stool or a ladder handy and we needed to get on something to reach something, we might have grabbed that chair. And at that point, it no longer had the concept of just being used for us to sit on. We stood up on it. Had we not had the concept, if we had just stuck to the label, chair is for sitting, well, we might not have been able to reach that thing that we needed to reach. And I'm not talking about those times, yes, I know, that there are times that our kids and our pets and even we get on a chair when we really shouldn't because we you know, end up getting it dirty or something. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about you know, those times that we will look at something and define it in a certain way and not see the, other, the potential, other ways that it can be utilized or the greater potential that it has just being an, a version of a God idea that's in this world. I remember my great aunt, Suzanne, my grandmother's sister in France, sharing a story. She loved when you would come into her home, she had two 
uh, beautiful glass vases. I think they were from Venice. They were Venetian glass. They had a rather large opening at the top. And they were quite delicate. And she would really be worried every time she cleaned them out you know, of chipping them or damaging them, breaking them. And so she was so proud of herself when she came up with this idea of using plastic wrap that we normally use, you know, to wrap food or, you know, put over plates or whatever to preserve food in the refrigerator. She had come up with this idea of just putting it over the top and cutting it very carefully so she could just get it to cling to the edges so you wouldn't even see, notice that it was there, but that prevented the dust from getting inside. Hence, she never had to wash those vases again. But I remember her telling us how there was a little four-year-old one time that she had shown him you know, this wonderful thing that she had done. This, she th was so proud of herself. And he was incensed, absolutely incensed, that she had used that plastic. That plastic is plastic wrap for food. That that was, to him, it's food wrap. He had somehow associated or put a label on this product that that's what it was used for. And therefore, it couldn't be used for anything else. We all found that rather amusing. How often do we do that in one way or another? How often do we assign a label to something or someone or a group of people that based on a behavior or just you know, any number of conditions or situations, we put a label on them? How often do we accept labels or put labels upon ourselves? that limit our ability to perceive that divine essence at the center of those people or at the center of ourselves, and therefore limit our experience of God in the world. There was a, um, a study done that I read about in Psychology Today where college students were shown a video of a young girl named Hannah answering some test questions. And they were asked to evaluate her academic ability based on how she answered the questions. Now, before seeing that video for answering the questions, they were shown, different groups were shown uh, two different videos. So one video showed Hannah playing in a very middle class neighborhood and the people who were going to watch that, the video of her taking the test were told that her parents were college graduates. The other groups saw the video of her playing in a low-income housing complex, a neighborhood that they knew to be a low-income housing, and they were told that her parents were high school graduates. Now, Hannah, on the video, when answering the questions, apparently she did well with some pretty tough questions, and then sometimes, again, labels, tough questions, and then she um, apparently struggled with others that we would label as simpler questions. But consistently, those watching her taking that test, who had seen her raise, you know, as in a middle class neighborhood, rated her as being at the fifth grade level academically. And those that saw her playing in the lower income middle class, uh, lower income uh, neighborhood with a high school graduate as opposed to college graduate parents rated her as at the fourth grade or lower. Exact same video in terms of her answering the questions. So when we hear about that, and I'm sure we're not totally surprised to hear that, um, we know that we form biases based on these labels that we assign to people. And uh, for those who are interested in that, we have our practitioner, Sabrina Johnson, has coming up with a workshop that starts this Saturday 
on embracing our diversities, which would be looking at a lot of those biases, those labels that we use that don't necessarily promote our greater experience and expression of God in the world. So, you know, the first problem is that those who are observing Hannah and seeing her as more limited based on her socioeconomic status, they missed out. They missed out on seeing a greater potential in that girl. Had she been someone in their life, they, they might have missed out on engaging with her in ways that she was perfectly capable of engaging with them. Second problem is that those who are being labeled in ways that don't really reflect their potential, potential can buy into those labels. Many of the beliefs, labels, perceptions that we carry about ourselves, not being enough, not being worthy, needing to be more like this or that, are based on labels that others may have assigned to us at some point that we bought into. And that doesn't really support our seeing ourselves that greater potential that allows us to step into greater experiences and expressions of life. You know, we might want to ask ourselves how many of those labels that the ways that we label ourselves are based on others' opinions that we have uh, picked up along the way. You know, there have been any number of studies done showing how children who are reminded of their inner potential and who are told that they have so much potential in them to go beyond where they are right now versus those who are given negative feedback constantly, the ones who are given the positive reinforcement are much more likely to thrive and do well than those who are con consistently being given negative feedback, being you know, pinned with these different negative labels. And that carries on into adulthood. And so you know, it really behooves us to become aware of and peel away those labels that deny the presence of God's goodness in us and others. And you know, every time I look at this subject or this theme, I have to emphasize it doesn't mean that we don't admit to and address areas where we or others aren't living up to our potential. It doesn't mean that we don't address situations in the world that don't reflect the higher potential that could be expressed in those situations. But rather than assign a label of how we or others might have shown up, for example, as unkind, mean, or lacking in some way, rather than taking on I am unkind or they're unkind, I'm a failure, or they're a failure, I mean, they're mean, I, you know, we could go on and on, those kinds of labels. I think it really helps us if we look at the situation, we really feel, indeed, this wasn't the best way that we or they could have shown up in these situations. To reframe it as that was an unkind thing. That was an unkind way of showing up in that moment for me or that individual. Or there seems to be a pattern of unkindness that comes up frequently that I see myself engaging in or that I see them engaging in. You know, we can acknowledge how it appears, but it doesn't define them. That simple reframe allows us to think more in terms of this is what's happening now, but there's some greater potential to be revealed. And we're all multifaceted beings. You know, I don't think there's any label we could pin on any of us that could begin 
to describe who we are and all the different ways we show up in the world. And we're all also evolving to more fully recognize and express God's nature in us. And along the way, there are going to be times that we express that nature beautifully and other times when you know we're feeling very separate from God, separate from love, separate from wholeness and abundance, that we won't. But the potential is still there. And it's important for us to remember that when we put labels on, or especially negative labels on ourselves and others versus acknowledging some of the negative patterns that might have come up or might be showing up right now, but that can be changed, we shut down our hearts. You know, we shut down our minds to the potential for God's goodness that's greater than any of our transgressions. It's absolutely greater than any of our transgressions. It's, it's almost like when we pin that label on ourselves and others, we take a pattern that's fluid, that's malleable, that's changeable. And we, we almost solidify it. It's like taking you know, water that's so fluid and then you know, giving it shape in the, in the form of ice, solidifying it and saying, that's what it is. And what we do in that is right then, we limit our experience of the potential in ourselves or others for something greater. So if we find that this kind of applies to us, that we have a tendency to ascribe negative labels to ourselves and others that probably doesn't serve us, what I'd offer as something to try just to get past that tendency and just do this as a, a little exercise in this week is maybe look at one, one negative label you might have ascribed to yourself. You know, there are any number of them, but just pick one that where you say, I'm this, and it's not a particularly um, positive way of thinking of yourself. And remind yourself or shift that label to recognizing, you know, I haven't expressed God's love, wisdom, kindness, whatever the attribute of God that you would rather express rather than this label that you've assigned to yourself. So maybe look at it and say, hmm, there have been times where I really haven't expressed that in these situations. However, and that's this is where we make the change, that love, that wisdom, that kindness of God lies within me. And I open to expressing it more fully going forward. You've right there started to peel back the label and make room for that greater essence to come forth. And try doing that with someone to whom you've assigned, a, let's just put it an unflattering label. And remind yourself, you know, that if you've labeled them as unloving or unkind or whatever, that that's just a pattern that may have been expressed, that they've gotten engaged in, but that God's love, God's wisdom, God's abundance, whatever it is that you are denying with that label still lies within them. And to be willing to just know that truth for them, because as we're all interconnected, when we know those truths for each other, we raise the vibration of consciousness for all of us. And when we do this, we peel back the limiting human labels and make room for more of God's nature to be revealed. And so I'm going to invite you to turn your attention inward. And just bring your awareness to any negative label that you've placed upon yourself. A limiting, a limiting idea. A 
a way that you're seeing yourself that limits your expression of life. And remind yourself right now that even if there have been instances where your behavior or the life conditions have matched that label, it was temporary. Whatever that label may be, de determine what quality of God would be more fully expressed in your life if that idea of yourself, if that label were removed. And remind yourself that this quality of God lies within you right now. And as you open to it, it comes into a greater expression through you. And now call to mind anyone whom you've labeled in a negative way. Just pick one person. And remind yourself that even if that negative pattern has shown up through this person, it's just a pattern, it's changeable. And so turn to the idea, that sense of a presence of God's goodness in this person that's greater than that pattern that they've demonstrated. And just commit to remembering that for them. And know that as you do this for yourself and others, you open the channels for more of God's goodness to flow into your life and into the world. And so from this place in consciousness, I invite you to join me in prayer in knowing the truth beyond the labels, behind the labels that show up as some of the human challenges that we can face as we move through life, knowing absolutely that that one life of God is present throughout creation, that everything is created out of God's nature, and God's nature fills and surrounds all that is, including me, including all of us gathered on this call, all beings, all creation, everywhere. And so let us know that God being present in all things, that God's unchangeable nature God's pure vibration of love and light and infinite creativity and intelligence is present in every moment. And for those who might be struggling with the human experience of change, whether it be a change of a life condition that they become accustomed to, the change of loss of a relationship or a loved one, that there really is no loss in the mind of God, that things are just reshaping themselves into a new way and that we all stay interconnected. And so for those who are experiencing that discomfort with change, let us absolutely know that the changeless nature of spirit is right there to be revealed, to be experienced and expressed in some new way. Let us also know that that nature is absolutely perfect, whole, complete. It is a vibration of health and wholeness and well-being. And so while right now, there's much attention on worldly conditions of illness, dis-ease, a pandemic, all of this, that there's an underlying nature of God that is health and wholeness. As we open to it, it reveals itself. It reveals all the perfect channels for healing, for health to be restored, for that well-being to be experienced and expressed. And by us knowing that, that is absolutely coming forth. 
I know absolutely and invite you to enjoy me in knowing that that nature of the divine is always there as a giving nature to give of itself in some unique way through each of us. And so for anyone who's feeling challenged with their creative expression, let us absolutely know that that creative nature, that impulse to give uniquely through each one is the greater power and that these individuals are moved into those perfect situations where their talents, the ways they express themselves are appreciated, are valued, and they can feel fulfilled by sharing of God's nature in their unique ways. We know absolutely that this nature of the divine is infinite. And so for anyone experiencing any form of lack or limitation, that is a temporary human condition, that God's infinite abundance is present at the center of all beings. And as we know this, we see a shift and expansion for those in conditions of lack and limitation to open up and to see that greater inflow and ability to share that nature of the divine, that we are all vessels through which God's infinite abundance, God's ability to give and take in and receive and delight is always being expressed and expanding. And let us join in knowing that at the core of all beings, all creation is a vibration of love. As we open to that, where there is any discord, we now open the channels for that greater self-love, love of others, love of things that we do, pouring hearts and love into all of our actions. And knowing that that nature of love is one that is always for greater good, let us honor its impulse by setting our own individual intentions for greater good in silence. And so we know that whatever these intentions may be, whether it's for greater good for ourselves or others or conditions in the world, that we are feeling the impulse of the one infinite power of God for more and more of its nature to be felt and known and realized throughout creation. And as we know that God is behind these intentions and God is present in all of these situations, Good is revealed because that is God's way. And so together we declare, I accept these truths for myself and all beings everywhere. And so we bless our church. We bless all churches everywhere, synagogues, temples, mosques, ashrams, all paths to God, knowing that all paths lead us to the same God, the same truth, and it's with a heart filled with gratitude for knowing this truth that I release this word knowing it is so, I let it be, and so it is. And together we say, Amen.
Amen. <laughs> so this is the time in our service for our affirmative giving. And so um, those of you who are wishing to make your donations online, uh, you can just go to nhcrs.org forward slash give, and uh, that'll take you straight to our donation page where you can make our, your donation. Of course, you can still send checks in to the church. We appreciate so much those of you who have been doing that, and will also be available for 30 minutes after the service uh, if you want to call in and make your donation over the phone. So uh, number is 818-762-7566. With that, I uh, just want to say right up front, thank you so much for all the ways you continue to support us, to support the spiritual community so we can continue to do our work and be with you in this way. And so let's hold our gifts to our hearts as we say together. From the love of pure spirit within me, I bless this gift. I send it forth to heal and bless and prosper. It is evidence of my faith and belief. It does good work in the world and returns to me multiplied abundantly. Thank you. Thank you, Margaret. So uh, as we bring our service to a close, I uh, want to begin first by uh, thanking everyone who's been of service this evening. So out there in uh, virtual land, <laughs> thank you to uh, Gail Pallott and practitioners Gail Pallott and Liz Racy, who are holding vigil for us this evening. Uh, thank you so much to our Zoom team, Barbara Berg and Lynn Romanowski, who are supporting us on Zoom this evening, as well as Melissa Allen for supporting us with Facebook Live. Couldn't be doing this without all of you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And thank you to everyone here in the sanctuary, to Adam, who is ensuring that we are once again seen and heard up here, uh, to Dean Regan, to Alex Thompson, Doreen Remo, we're all here working the cameras, all the technical stuff here at the sanctuary. Again, couldn't be doing this without all of you. And may I just say thank you, thank you, thank you once again to our awesome team, Margaret Owens, Sam Krieger, for perfect musical support this evening, as always, as always. <laughs> um, few announcements. So as I mentioned earlier, uh, you can make donations over the phone uh, for 30 minutes after service. If um, you don't feel comfortable doing things online, just give us a call. And again, if you do want to do it online but you didn't have time to jot down, 
the link, it's our website, nhcrs.org forward slash give. And the phone number again to the church is 818-762-7566. Uh, we will have prayer with a practitioner available on Zoom after service. If you'd like to have a practitioner pray privately, one-on-one -on -one with you after service, just uh, if you're not already on Zoom, join us on Zoom and we can do, uh, hook you up with a practitioner in that way. And of course, you can always email your prayer requests to us at prayer at nhcrs.org or call into the church office and select option four, which is for the Ministry of Prayer, where you can leave a voicemail message for any prayer requests that you have. And we uh, check those every day and send those out to our practitioners. So you'll have a whole core of practitioners supporting your intentions in prayer. Uh, next week, I will be back here, 6.50 for the meditation, 7 p.m. for the service via Facebook Live and Zoom. And my topic will be starting anew. We'll be right, it'll be just after the uh, holiday of Rosh Hashanah and uh, uh, just it, we, we could be right between you know, Shoshana and Yom Kippur, so kind of working those themes in there. Uh, we invite you to stay informed and up to date with us through our website, our weekly e blasts, and monthly newsletters. If you haven't already signed up for the notifications, uh, just go to our website, nhcrs.org, and do that so you can proactively uh, receive notifications about what's going on. So, for example, if you were getting those notifications, you would know that A Course in Miracles via Zoom will be happening tomorrow. This group uh, is facilitated by our wonderful practitioner, Jeannie Laporte. So they'll be meeting tomorrow evening on Zoom uh, at 7.15 to 9.15. Just go to our website for the Zoom link. Coming up this Saturday, as I mentioned in my talk, we have a workshop, a 10-week workshop with uh, practitioner Sabrina Johnson, Embracing Our Diversities. And that will begin this Saturday, the 19th, and running for uh, two, 10 weeks uh, from 10 a.m. till noon. And so you're invited to in, uh, join for an incredible journey, learning how we can embrace our own diversities and others using science of mind principles and teachings, peeling away those labels and opening up to more uh, love and peace in the world. Cost is $100 for the 10-week series. Uh, also coming up next Monday, we're really excited about our worldwide collective meditation for peace uh, on Zoom. That'll be, uh, well, part of it will be from here in the sanctuary. Uh, so that'll be next Monday, the 21st at 1 p.m. So we invite you to join us along with the Centers for Spiritual Living Global Community for an hour-long International Day of Peace celebration via Zoom. There will be readings, there will be music, and because we're including pe remote people, we'll have our beloved soloist Nadine Risha, who's you know, going to be joining us from Las Vegas. Uh, we'll have practitioners in different locations um, performing readings, guided meditations. Reverend Nadine will be with us. It's just going to be wonderful. So um, that, uh, the link for that is on our website. Again, Monday the 21st, uh, this coming Monday at 1 p.m. Zoom virtual patio before and after Wednesday services. So please join us for 20 minutes before service or stay on afterwards to visit with the congregation, to be part of the reception line uh, after service. Um, our teens continue to meet on Zoom. Our men's group meets every Sunday on Zoom at 11 a.m. And we have our Zoom meditation still going Monday through Saturdays from 8 to 8.15 a.m. So there's still lots happening please check out the website um, and hope you will join us for any number of those events. With that, just want to say thank you for being with us this evening. Let's turn our attention inward one more time. And so as we join together in consciousness, how grateful I am 
once again for all the ways that Spirit has revealed itself to us and through us this evening. I absolutely know that in coming together that we have awakened to that essence of the divine within and that we carry that forward into our lives, just creating ever greater experience of good for ourselves and seeing it ripple out into the world. And so I absolutely give thanks right here, right now for the healing and revealing that has unfolded in our time together. And in gratitude, I absolutely give thanks to that one presence and power to which all goodness always comes. And I release this word knowing it is so. I let it be. And so it is. And together we say, Amen. Thanks again for being with us. Let's wrap this up with music. <laughs> Good night, everyone.